Hey guys, Tark with Cyclone FPV, and we are we have just got we just finished downloading our firmware to the computer, and we just finished updating our SD card contents folder on our computer. So now what we're going to do, and if you notice, this is the uh, this is the uh, screen that we were last at, right? So what we want to do now is we want to head on over to our OpenTX program right here, and we want to click OK. Just get that out of the way. If that's on your screen, still just click OK. The next thing that we want to do, and I'm going to show you this one, so pay close attention, we need to put our radio in a mode that allows it to talk to the computer. So here's what we're going to do. To do that, you've got these two sliders right here, right? You're going to push them in towards each other, just like that, and hold them there. So I'm going to use my thumbs to do that, and then you're going to press the power button right here. And what happens is when you push them in and press the power button, then you let go at the same time. Here's what happens. Oops, hold on. Oh, we're gonna there we go. Sorry, it takes a little bit of practice, okay? So when you do that, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you again here. So again, as soon as you see the light come on, okay? So for the last time, as soon as you see the, black, the back screen light up, ready? Let go. So what this does is this puts it into your, your uh, DFU basically, where you can now plug in your USB cable, okay? And I'm gonna show you what happens here. So let's put the screen, let's put the computer screen on, and let's just leave this like this. We're going to plug the micro USB cable. Remember, it has to be a data cable. We're going to plug it right into the bottom of the radio, just like that. You'll hear your computer recognize that something's big plugged in, and your radio will now read. And just in case you can't see that, it will now read USB connected. Pay close attention to this. The bootloader is 2.3.0. We just downloaded 2.3.11. You'll be able to see that we're going to do a firmware upgrade. It'll make more sense now, okay? So here we go. So let's go ahead now, head on over to computer, and in just a second, you're probably going to see some screens pop up because what the computer is doing right now is reading the memory and then also reading our SD card, okay? So look, that's our new volume. That's what we called it. That's our memory card. That's our SD card. You can close that, all right? And then you'll also notice now that there is going to be a, another folder here called Tyrannus. That is the internal memory. Do not mess with that folder at all. Please make sure to always leave that one alone. You're only going to be working in the new volume folder, okay? All right, so with that said now, now that it's connected, go back over to OpenTX right here on the screen and look at the icons on the left here, okay? One of the icons, this one right here, if you hover over it, it says right firmware radio and that's what we wanna do. So we're gonna left click on that and then we're gonna go search for our firmware because we wanna make sure that the computer's pointing at the right one. So click load, then go to your desktop, then go to your transmitter folder then go to your student X9 Lite, then go to OpenTXFW, and then there's your firmware. So just click that once, click open, and then make sure that you have the firmware start screen and make sure you have this one, it's very important, check hardware compatibility. This way you can help to eliminate the loading of the wrong firmware, okay? So once this is all done and looks just like this, click right to TX, and you're gonna see this progression bar, and it's gonna go very quickly, all right? It'll be done here in just a second. Perfect. All right, so we've just updated the firmware on the radio. Now we still need to do the bootloader firmware, which you can see here, it still says 2.3.0, and we're gonna need to take it 2.3.11. But before we do that, we need to update our SD card. Remember, in our radio, it's been formatted, okay? But on our hard drive, we added all the files. So here's what we wanna do. I want you to go back to your folder, okay? Your SD card folder here. I want you to go up one to your main student X9 Lite folder. Remember this OpenTX folder we created? We want to put this inside our SD card. So I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. First thing is put a check mark beside it. And then while it's blue, right click on it and left click on cut. Then double click the SD card, double click, double click the firmware folder. And anywhere on this screen here, right click and then left click on paste. And that's going to actually put this in an organized way because when we do our when we do these SD cards, we need them to remain organized, all right? So now that we've done that, we are ready to go ahead. We've just flashed our firmware. Here's what we're ready to do next. We can we can minimize, I guess, if you want. We're going to click this icon here, which basically synchronizes the computer's SD card folder with our radio's SD card folder. Okay, and no, I don't need this to snooze. So click it, and it's going to ask you to point it in the right direction of where's your SD card and also where are the files uh, coming from. So this is gonna be the local folder. That's the SD card folder we created. So we're gonna hit our little folder icon here. We're gonna to go to desktop, and then we're gonna to go to transmitter, and we're gonna to go to student X9 Lite, 
and then we have our SD card folder right here so you can just double click that and once you see everything in there which it looks good to me we're going to go ahead and click select folder okay now on the radio folder that's going to be our new volume whatever drive letter that is so click the folder and then find the new volume right here and that's going to be drive d once it's in there click select folder and then click start and what's going to happen is your radio now as you can see right here on the screen it says you have 307 files that are in that folder it is going to copy those 307 files over to the sd card that's in the radio then it's going to look at the radio and say okay now compare your files to the uh, files, uh, it's gonna say, sorry, it's gonna, yeah, compare your files from the radio, sorry, to the files on the hard drive. Make sure you're going both directions, everything is copied properly. So pay attention here and you'll see exactly what's going on. What you can see on the screen is, it said a total files of 307 existed, okay? It's created 130, which means it's writing to our SD card that we formatted. But once it's done, it's gotta check the other way too to make sure what's on the SD card is actually on the computer so there will be a total of 614 files that are checked written or otherwise um, uh, uh, looked at okay before this process is done so just watch the screen there and you'll understand exactly what's about to happen and then we will get to getting ready for the apis because we're almost done okay so let's see we don't have much time left <clears throat> Oh, that was quick. Okay, so as you can see, 614 total files because you've got them now on the radio and you've got them on the computer. Now, if you were to run that uh, the same backup again, watch what would happen. It's instant because all it's looking for is you know the timestamps basically and the file sizes and make sure nothing's changed. So we're good there. So let's go ahead and click close. Okay, so now our SD card has everything on it and we flashed the radio, but now we need to flash our bootloader. Here's how we're going to do that. First thing you're going to want to do is go again, find that safely eject uh, icon, left click on it, and then left click on eject Tyrannus, then left click on the icon again, and then left click on eject new volume D. Okay, now that that's done, we can go ahead and pull the cable out without the risk of losing any data. And you're going to see where our screen is now. So we're actually done with the computer for a bit. Look at where our screen is. It says, um, if you look at the bottom, it says X9 Lite 2.3.11 OTX, but the problem is, is that's not what matches the top, and we need to get the top to work, right? So take your take your scroll key and go to exit and click it. Welcome to OpenTX. All of a sudden, the radio talks, right? Okay, now check this out. So failsafe comes up, that's fine. But now what we want to do is we want to find out what happened um, uh, with with everything, make sure everything's working properly, okay? Because we still have to do the bootloader. So here's what we're gonna do. Now you're gonna hold your menu key down. And you remember before it went to that setup screen, I don't know if you ever saw it before, but there was a setup screen. Now with the new version and the new firmware, we're at a new screen called tools. We don't want tools, we're not worried about tools right now. What we do wanna do is we wanna keep pressing the page button, okay, one time, and there we go with our SD card. Then I want you to scroll down until you see that highlighted area, go to firmware, press your, press your button here, and then look, see we have OpenTX right here. So I want you to go ahead and click that again, all right okay and then there's our file that we had right now if you load it from here you can actually flash the bootloader watch if you long press the enter key for like two seconds you're going to get this screen up flash bootloader copy rename or delete so what we're going to do is we're going to click flash bootloader sorry you have to be careful like me my fat fingers roll this thing all over the place so be careful click it and then it's going to do it very quickly it's done now that it's done you can hit exit and exit all right, now we're going to close it. We're going to power this off, and I'm going to show you how you can check. So just hold it down. Okay, go ahead and push your sliders back in like we did before. Push power and let go. And look at the top. Top says bootloader 2.3.11. The bottom says the x Light 2.3.11. We now have these matching, so we can scroll to exit, Welcome and we are to perfect. TX. Okay, so with that said now, we want to go ahead and um, let me see where we're at. All right, we're at about almost 10 minutes. So what we're going to do here is we're going to stop here, and then I'm going to come back and show you how to set up your Model 1 to work with your APIS, and then we're going to get started on the APIS itself. All right, guys? Again, if you have any questions, please head over to our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash CycloneFPV, or as always, please, please, please make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel right down there. We really appreciate it. Okay, guys? Other than that, we'll see you soon. Peace.